um welcome everyone to our vimarsh session today uh, we are very lucky to have a very enterprising and um, a fun uh, guest today uh, and before we speak about um, who our guest speaker is for today ashi sangche sat tumka khanch topic mano as you all know our uh, today's um, vimarsh session is mainly targeted for the gaon ka youth Uh, so a lot of you um, are going through the phase in life in which you are applying for colleges or you have just entered college or you have just graduated from college so you are in that college mode so there's a lot of questions in your mind about kanch university pick kar cha what should be the criteria you know and what should i do to get into the best university how do i make myself the most marketable candidate um and so many more questions right and as your families are with you you know trying to go with you through these struggles and making uh, trying to make you the most successful um, candidate as well um and then uh, we have shruti kamath um who has been very successful as a student uh, she is a very dynamic young woman who has been successful in her educational career and she is an inspiration to many Uh, so uh, uh, when i requested her if she can talk to the youth of kaoka and inspire them uh, to help them with uh, any questions they may have to you know dispel any fears they may have she readily agreed so thank you so much shruti your enthusiasm is amazing um when when we look at you we know that you know the future of kaoka future of our workforce and and just future in general is in good hands so um without any further delay i'll um, let uh, shruti take over the session and you can talk about yourself shruti and how you want to conduct the session how do you want the questions to come in to go flow sanga and how you prefer to conduct it okay thank you so much i will share my screen now let me know once you guys are able to see my screen this ta this ta screen this okay um first of all i'd like to thank priti aunty kedar uncle for reaching out and giving me this opportunity um kauka has been a part of my life since i was a baby so it's my greatest pleasure to give back and really just share all of my experiences with you guys um when i was figuring out what to go over today i realized there was just so much i wanted to share but I boiled it down to a few major topics. Um, so, if there's anything at all that's not in my presentation or something additional that you would like to know, um, feel free to unmute and ask, or put it in the chat as well. Um, with that being started, um, today I'm going to be talking about what is mission possible: steps for college success. So the agenda I'll start off by introducing myself so you get a little bit of background about who I am what I'm doing um I'll talk about personal brand college and career planning um a few networking strategies key takeaways and then um any questions that you guys have for me So to tell you guys a little bit about who I am um as you know my name is Shruti I am studying psychology and business at San Jose State University and I will be graduating in spring of 2021 so I'm definitely really excited to be starting the next chapter of my life and um diving a little bit deeper into the professional corporate world Um I am currently interning at Hitachi America as a HRIS intern. Um my responsibilities primarily include supporting our team with project management and analytics side of workday and this is really exciting to me personally because I'm really passionate about these two and it aligns um perfectly with my professional interests and future goals. Um Now you guys must be wondering how did I end up here why did I choose psychology so to give you guys a little bit of background about about all of that when I completed my high school in 2017 and joined us JSU I wasn't really sure of the industry that I wanted to go into I I know that's that's very very common it's okay to be a little bit confused I at that point of time I was leaning towards um more of the health side of things I wanted to go to 
PA school. I wanted to become a physician's assistant, but then I took a couple of courses, um, specifically clinical psychology and abnormal psychology. And that's when I realized, hey, I don't really see myself um, pursuing a career in this, devoting my entire life to it. But I was always kind of sort of interested in the business side of things. And that's when I decided, let me actively make a change in my professional career. Let me see, um, explore different career opportunities that would better fit my skill set as well as my interests. Um, and now why psychology? Um, I have always really been interested in human behavior and really understanding how all of that plays a role in improving situations. Um, when I was in high school, I took an AP course, AP Psychology, and I worked as a research assistant for Stanford University's Lifespan Development Lab. I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Laura Karstensen, and pretty much both of those experiences gave me the exposure and gave me a better understanding of psychology and really piqued my interest. Um, besides all my professional experience and interests, I am really passionate about dancing, traveling, and trying new cuisines. So on a completely other note, if you have any suggestions, any any comments on that, I like favorite places to visit, favorite food places to try. I am more than happy to hear about that as well. So let's get started. Um, now that you guys know a little bit more about me, I wanted to start off this discussion by talking a little bit about personal brand. And this is because it's important for a lot of different reasons. So you guys must be wondering, hey, what, what is this top? Like, what does personal brand even mean? Um, personal brand in, is kind of the way that people perceive you and the way that you promote yourself, your, your brand, pretty much, right? Um, the way I like to think of it is it's, your fa it's the foundation and fundamentals that lead to the different elements of success um, throughout your future, right? It's really what will help you establish and reach the goals that you've set for yourself, both personally as well as professionally. And it's what'll help you stay unique. It'll what'll it's what'll help you be distinguished from the competition and really help build that trust within um, whatever your target range is, right? So for those of you applying to college, it'll help you stand out from the other applicants. For those of you looking for an internship or a full-time job, um, the same rules apply, right? It's it's a game and and personal brand is really important. So with that being said, um, I want you all to take a minute and maybe get a paper paper and pencil or just think in your head or use your phone. Um, think about three words that you would use to describe yourself. And then if anybody wants to unmute and share their answers, feel free to do so. And then I'll tell you guys my words and why. Does anybody have any idea of three words that they would use to describe themselves? Okay, you can keep thinking about it. I'll tell you what my three words are. Um, the three words that I chose are strategic, solution-oriented, and sincere. Um, I chose these for a couple of reasons, actually. The first being, they all start with an S. My name starts with an S. So that's a good way for you guys to remember that creative aspect of things. And the second thing is, I think these three words really speak to my professional as well as leadership experiences pretty well. So that's kind of how I chose those words and how I'm able to speak upon that. And I think that starting with self-discovery, starting with the three words you choose for yourself is really important because it helps you understand, better understand your career pathway, what you wanna do in the future. So if you guys wanna share your words, feel free to do so. If not, um, keep it to yourself too, that's okay. <laughs> um, our next, the next question I want you guys to think about is what are three words that others would use to describe you? And this is also important because it's, the way others perceive you is how they work with you. It's how they de deal with you in the professional world, whether that's in the business industry, whether um, any sort of industry that you're trying to pursue, right? Um, for me, I, I thought about it a little bit. And I think three words would be hardworking, reliable, and resourceful. Um, I think that 
just like I said, right, it's important not only for you to understand the words that describe you, but how others describe you too, because you're authentic, your, your authenticity, being unique, those capabilities are how you're able to leave that lasting impression on other people and really just build the brand that you want to portray. I have more questions for you guys, um, more questions for you to ask yourself, okay? So um, the reason I'm asking all of these questions is for those of you starting to write your college application essays, for those of you preparing for interviews for internships, things like that, these are all very important things to keep in mind. Um, so what are your values? What's most important to you as a person? Is it your family, your financial success. I mean, it could be a combination of all, right? Um, just being, feeling accomplished. Is it helping others? Um, or is it just something completely different? There's not really a right or a wrong answer. It's just what, what, are, what is most valued to you, right? Um, second thing is, what are you good at? So think about your academic as well as your personal interests. And honestly, even consider things like your soft skills. So are you good at listening to others? Are you, do you demonstrate passion? How do you demonstrate it? Do you manage your time wisely? Um, are you a flexible and adaptable type of person? Are you a strong team player? So these are, not only will these values and these factors help you narrow down to possibly a subject in, that you're trying to pursue to study in college or even a job that you'd like to see yourself in, um, it'll really help you find, boil everything down. Um, so the third question I have is, what do you have to offer? Um, so now think about things that are beyond your academics, beyond your intellectual abilities. Um, what are your talents? What are your interests? What are, how do you perceive the world, right? Um, and then the last question is, um, what do you want to accomplish? So college isn't just about getting those perfect grades, taking those exams, completing those assignments. It's, it goes way, way beyond that. So what do you want to get out of your college life? So for me, I was really interested in SJSU's honors program, as well as um, being a part of extracurricular activities. Um, given my passion for dance, I was really interested in being a part of my university's competitive Bollywood dance team, and then um, different leadership opportunities. So I currently serve a part of the leadership team of our women in business chapter, and that's these things are important to me because having that ability to grow and strengthen my network, as well as getting to meet people from diverse backgrounds was something I'm really interested in and something I was fortunate enough to do so at SJSU. So next, um, college and career planning. So now you guys have an understanding about what your personal brand is, what it's like to market yourself. Now let's think about how that ties into um, planning for the future. So a few things about important criteria. So from a very high level perspective, I would suggest considering the following. Um, and this is just based off of my experiences and the knowledge that I have. And just think about these things when you're trying to consider the best college or the best route for you, right? So as a Bay Area local, one of the most or primary things that I was looking for in my college hunt was finding something um, based on location as well as city life and finding a program that fit my interests. Um, so the first thing is assess your college, your, the school's programs of study. So are you interested, if you're interested in psychology, right, does the school offer that major that you're interested in? Does it have resources to support your other intellectual resources? So like, do they have um, different campus organizations? Do they have different um, just different, different items that would make your whole entire um, pathway successful. Um, then think about examining the institution's style of instruction. So um, in college, there are two, two sort of systems. You have the quarter system and you have the semester system. Um, semester system is rather spaced out. It's for those of you in high school right now, you're probably used to that. You have, um, you have more time to cover all your edge, all your requirements. But the quarter system, I don't really know much about it, but I know it's it's rather fast paced and um, it's all it's really quick. Um, do you like large lecture settings? So do you like when you have more than 300 students around you? Um, does that interest you? Does that bore you? Keep those are things to keep in mind. Um, do you like learning in a practical setting or do you like learning more about theory? Um, those are all important things to keep in mind when you're looking for a college that's for you. 
Um, the, the next thing would be match your aptitude and levels of academic rigor. So how do your, how does your GPA, your test scores, how do these fit with the stats for the school, right? How, how good is the program that you're specifically applying for um, aligning with your interests? So something my sister told me to share with you guys, um, when I joined, when I was applying for colleges, um, it was kind of different from how the process is right now and how it may be for a few of you in the future. Um, apparently UCs have gone test blind and a lot of other colleges may be um, following in pursuit. So um, focus is rather on your, on your grades as well as your essays. So just keep those things in mind. Um, and then the next thing is evaluate the university for, for the best social and financial fit. So is this college campus comfortable to you? Um, what type of social environment do you prefer um, in terms of finances? Do they offer financial aid? Um, do they have scholarships? Definitely recommend applying for scholarships, whether it's for need-based purposes or whether it's you achieve it through merit. So merit is like your grades, um, the different talents that you have based on that. And then um, just consider what what value, what are you valued most? What do you do well? What do you really have to offer to this university? And then other things that I want you guys to consider are the size, the location of the university, um, the different courses that they have, um, housing that's really important. Um, if you're interested in getting that college experience, living with the roommates, I definitely recommend it's good. It's it helps you become independent. <laughs> um, just the makeup of the student body, the different extracurriculars they offer, and just the campus atmosphere overall. And then once you have collected all of this information for yourself, um, think about creating a list of safety, reach, as well as match schools, right? Um, you guys must be wondering, what are these three words, right? So your safety schools are how your exam scores, your grades, how you are, your the statistics pretty much, how it compares to um, the average range of the students in that university. So you're like an average, um, you'll fit in pretty well, right? Based on your scores. Then think about the matches. So this is where you're, you're, solid, you, you're solidly fit in there based on your GPA, your test scores. And then the reach is something that you're aiming for, your test scores, your inf all your statistics are a little bit lower, but you still have a chance of getting in too. So the next thing is, now that you have considered all of these things, I think it's important to consider which college route is best for you. So a lot of us are quite familiar with the four-year pathway. Um, that's what I chose, and that's, that's what we're most familiar just based on society. Um, there is one thing that many may, many of you may not know. It's called middle college. Um, this is pretty much a non-traditional high school experience where you have the opportunity to do your first two years of high school at your school, and then your final two years you get the opportunity to take it at take your courses at a local community college. Um, so basically, how this works is you have after you transfer to a college, you get to graduate two years early. And I think I recommend this option for those of you who are very certain in the pathway that you guys want to choose, very certain on what you guys want to study. It's it's not for everybody, but it's something you guys can definitely consider. Um, the next thing would be um, community college. So within community college, there are several options and several routes that you guys can take. So associate's degree, it's, it's pretty much an undergraduate degree that program for two years. And this is what you can get between your high school experience, graduating, as well as um, what comes before getting a bachelor's degree. And then one other thing is a trans is the transfer program or trans transferring from a community college into another college. Um, don't think this is easy. Um, a lot of people go to community college, say, hey, it's okay, I'll get into another school super easy. Absolutely not. Um, you are still responsible for being proactive. You're still responsible for staying on top of things and meeting meeting all the different requirements that are there. So that's something to consider if that interests you. And then um, one specific program within the UCs at in California um, is the TAG program. So this is transfer admission guarantee. And this pretty much um, 
based on certain requirements, I am not exactly sure what they are, but um, there are six participating UC campuses in this program. Um, you can transfer from a community college to either Davis, Irvine, Merced, Riverside, um, Santa Barbara, and Santa Cruz. So now you have a whole lot of information, but I think it's important to collect this all into one, right? So if, oops. So you're considering um, several things in a checklist for applying to college. So think about your college list um, that, that I discussed about creating your safeties, your matches, your reaches. Think about the different deadlines for these submissions. And then also think about the guidelines for your applications. So different colleges, different programs require additional things. So just make a list of all of that. I highly recommend using Excel or Google Sheets and just storing all of your information in one single place just so it's easy and convenient for you. Um, then think about your test scores. Um, like I said earlier, I think they're becoming optional and um, some schools are becoming test blind. So just make sure you also focus on making sure your essays are top notch quality, making sure you continue to strive and achieve those, those really good grades. Um, your essays, right? Make sure um, you're, you're getting those prompts ready based on um, your interest. I'll talk a little bit more about essays in a little bit. And then recommendation letters. So this is only applicable to certain universities, I believe um, the CSU. So that's, that's what San Jose State University is a part of. That's the California State University program. Don't require recommendation letters, but you can ask um, this. The purpose of recommendation letters is pretty much to allow the colleges to understand how you are besides your academic experiences, how you make how you become a well-rounded applicant. And then of course, have your high school transcript ready and then supplementary documentation. So depending on the program you're applying to, depending on the major you're looking into, some may ask for supplementary information. So if you're going into arts um, types of programs, I know specifically sometimes they ask for portfolios to showcase your work. Um, I know certain honors programs ask for resumes and that's just a couple to name. I'm sure there's a lot more than that. And then consider financial aid options. So um, two specific financial aid programs are FAFSA and then Cal Grant. So just make sure you know when these deadlines are, all the different information that you need to compile in these applications. And then think about scholarships. It's important that you figure out which scholarships match based on the uni what the university offers, anything outside of the university. So these are just a few things to keep in mind when creating your college checklist. Does anybody have any questions you guys can ask right now or we can also cover them at the end too. Yeah, so Kauka kids and uh, parents, if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, you know, intervene. And Shruti is um, really open to questions. That's what she said. So, um, you know, this can be a discussion. You need not wait for the very end. And uh, I'm going to Shruti. So <laughs> uh, just be free with any questions, whatever is in your mind. Just um, ask me. Shruti, uh, mark a question. Sangha. You said that, uh, letters of recommendation, right? So, um, so students are at a point where obviously there's not much work experience behind them. So, what kinds of letters of recommendation would you yeah. suggest? And also, you know, something like Kaoka, right? The, the youth of Kauka is so involved in um, all the volunteering uh, activities and cultural activities. Is there anything that Kauka can do for the Kauka kids um, and you know youth? Um, in terms of the second question you had, I think um, what you guys are offering is really awesome. It's just up to students to participate in it, and they can definitely use those experiences when they're writing in their app when they're writing their applications and things like that. Um, for recommendation letters, I from what I remember, I asked my dance teacher, I asked the professor that I worked with at Stanford, and I also asked a couple of teachers at my school. So this kind of gives you a holistic understanding of who you are as an applicant. So it's not just um, you're getting 
recommendations from your teachers, you're getting recommendations from other experiences that you have had. Thank you, Shruti. Awesome. So I'll move on. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to interrupt and ask. I'd be happy to answer. Um, so now let's talk about college application essays. So um, the first thing I recommend you guys doing is just be authentic, be genuine, be, be, be vulnerable, be ready to share and write about something that's close and personal to you, because I think this is the best way to make sure that your writing is, is very true and very, very flowing well. Um, when you start writing your essays or start thinking about writing your essays, make a list of topics that you're passionate about and um, you've gained value and experience from. So one of my favorite essays that I wrote about was dance and how that's had a big impact on my life. I also talked about my experiences in research, um, different volunteering opportunities that I had. So just based on align those with the different prompts that the universities have. And one trick is, although some universities um, change the wording of their prompts, you can kind of sort of copy paste the content that you have prepared into another into another question and just sort of add to it, remove it based on the word count that is required. Um, one big thing, and I'm sure for all of you in those English courses, you know, show not tell, um, just make sure you're being descriptive, make sure it's, you're not just like, hi, I did this, I did that, just be, be descriptive about it, show it, show what you're trying to say, and don't be so direct. And then plan and start ahead of time. I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, college application, the questions, usually they're the same year to year. Um, you, I recommend you starting as soon as you finish your junior year. So during the summertime, um, you'll have two months of summer vacation to get started, get ahead, um, use that time to your advantage. Um, and then so you can proofread, edit and reread. I recommend you doing this several times and you have a lot of different resources around you. You'll have your parents that I'm sure will be happy to help you out. You'll have teachers that I'm sure will be happy to help you out and older friends who have been through the process that can serve as a resource for you. Um, you also have different free as well as paid essay readers. Um, that's just based on what you guys prefer. I know um, one of my friends told me that prompt.com is very good. Um, I used a service from my dad's work who read my essays. Um, that definitely helped me out and gave me feedback and I was able to um, edit those as well as um, reread, proofread, all of that. And then take breaks. Don't don't be obsessed with it, but that's the part of starting early and getting getting ahead. Um, space it out. Make sure you know when the deadlines are and stay on top of everything. Um, Shruti, if you don't mind, um, do you remember just uh, in general a couple of tips that you got from your um, resource who helped you, you know, improve your essay? Uh, can you just generalize a couple of tips for everyone? I don't really remember, <laughs> but I know my sister is going through the process right now and they kind of just, um, depending on how you've written your essay, sometimes they'll maybe give you, by paragraph, they'll give you feedback. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, I don't remember this exact no, feedback they must have given. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is networking strategies. So I think this is really important, whether you're still in high school, um, even more important for college students and continue to keep those skills college and beyond as well. Um, so why networking? For a few primary reasons. So I think it's important to network in order to build those relationships within industry professional world that you're interested in stepping into. So I recommend you attending networking events, conferences, speaker events. So you kind of get that opportunity to meet people in new um, professional settings and really develop those relationships with those individuals. Um, the second thing is understand the industry trends, right? It'll help you learn more about the updates and trends within the industry that you're interested in. And you'll get the opportunity to meet with leaders of that industry or just people that have started um, their step, step into that industry, you'll get a holistic view of 
what there is and what they're what they have to offer and learn new ideas right so learn about the different processes the different procedures that can help you that are insightful to you in developing new ideas so you can get that light bulb moment um, and increase motivation so networking with other people may help you refresh your passions it may help you improve your drive for the work that you do or that you are interested in and then, of course, recruitment opportunities. You never know who you're going to meet and you never know how that's going to help you later on. Um, so someone in an entry level position maybe can later on um, help you help connect you with the recruiters, help connect you with hiring managers that can potentially help you land a job. So you never know who you meet and how that's going to help you. Out. So it's important to keep those in mind. Then um, the other day I actually attended um, a conference networking event where um, one of the speakers um, talked about these four words and I they have stuck with me and I definitely wanted to share with them with you guys. Um, so they are called the four R's to a better network. So review, reduce, renew and realize. And these four words specifically because review, so review the different connections that you have in your network and um, sort of see what, what your goal is there. Reduce. Um, quality over quantity. I'm sure we've heard about that um, wherever we go. Um, make sure make sure they're all they're all applicable to what you're interested in, how you, they're able to help be of value to you, how you'll be able to be of value to them. Then think about renewing, right? So think about how you can re reconnect with these connections. Don't just, um, I'm very interested and passionate about LinkedIn, using my LinkedIn. So um, reconnect with with your connections, don't just aimlessly add people, make sure you're sending them connections with, with a message, following up with them, reconnecting with them later on. Um, and then realize, right? So what is your what is your goal with these connections? Think about it in a long term in a long term manner, right? Because these results are very relevant, these results are very important. And one thing this ties into the personal brand thing that I talked about a little while back is make sure you create and share um, quality content on social media. So those of you in high school who have like started getting into social media, even those of you in middle school, you know, make sure you're aware of what you're posting out there. Make sure you know who the audience is because colleges as well as employers later on, um, they do have ways of finding that information and finding you. So make sure that you're leaving a positive impact and you and a meaningful impact and you know who who is being able to see that and and make sure that you'd like to be seen in a nice way. There's a lot of questions on here. Um, if you guys wanna maybe take a screenshot of it and save it for yourself, feel free to do so. But these are some sample networking questions that um, I always like to think about, whether it's um, meeting with people that I'm in, in the industry that I'm interested in, or just um, speaking in interview, pra practicing for that. Um, the top three questions, they're all, they're all really valuable questions that you can ask, but the top three are some of my favorites. So the, what does a day in your role look like? This helps you understand a little bit more about the specific role that you're interested in going to, how, they're, how their responsibilities look like. Um, how do you measure success in your role? And then what would you change at your company? I think it's important to ask questions like these because it helps you understand what you can bring to the table to be a successful applicant, successful candidate, and then um, what's growth looking like, right? You're, you're, I hope your goal wouldn't be just to um, just be in that position that you're in. Um, it's important, I think it's important to have that growth mindset, look for, look for change, look for those challenges that help you get those different opportunities throughout your career. Then the next thing would be um, some key takeaways that I wanted to share with you guys. So I've, I've um, brought it down to five points. I think the first thing this is all what will help you probably be successful. Um, the first thing is find a mentor, right? Find someone um, from a field that interests you, someone that 
you trust and you're, you have that ability to share your short term and long term goals. It's never too late to find a mentor. People are very willing to help. People are willing to share their experiences and guide you based on the knowledge that they have and what how that aligns with your interests. And I think this will really help you get another perspective from someone else who has more experience than you do. And it'll help you bridge the gaps that you have from where you currently are and where you want to be. So I recommend finding a mentor, finding someone that'll help you, help guide you throughout your process, whether that's in your high school journey, whether that's in your college journey and beyond as well. And then the second thing is be a sponge. I know that phrase just sounds really weird, but um, just be willing to learn. And that curiosity and drive that you'll have, it'll help you, it'll help you go a long way. It'll, and I really like to think that having that drive and having that interest in in learning it, it's what's what is the fundamentals and foundation of your future and have that interest in understanding the space that you want to be in because it'll it'll make you better equipped for what you want to do and i kind of touched i kind of said this already but have a growth mindset so i think this definitely ties in with what I said before, because that curiosity and willingness to learn will make you be unique. It'll help you stand out for sure. And um, one really interesting fact that I wanted to share with you guys based on my journey is that your educational background and those experiences that you have aren't the only thing that isn't the only thing that you need, right? It's rather your skills and experiences that'll help you stand out and perform the job that you're interested in. So if there's something that you're curious about, something that you don't know, something you wanna learn, it's totally doable. And don't let anyone say otherwise because there's so many different resources that can help you get that information. So you have you have things like Coursera, Udemy, LinkedIn Learning, and um, I'm sure there's so many more. These are just a few that I've used myself that you can take advantage of and get be able to bridge those gaps and get that knowledge. And then the next thing on my slide is be a team player. So it's not just about being that strong puzzle piece. I think it's important to consider how you'll be able to contribute your efforts and leaving a lasting impact on the bigger picture, the organization that or the industry that you're interested in and how these different um, puzzle pieces help fit together and create that impact. And then the last thing is networking. So. Um, you guys are already doing a good job by attending um, discussions like these. Um, just get involved, more involved in your community and um, in organizations that you're passionate about and curious about. It'll help, it'll help you um, strengthen your network. And then um, a lot of numbers on the screen, but I just want you guys to take a moment and think about how in this world today we have I guess maybe 7.8 billion people. So yeah, that's absolutely a lot of lot of people. But I want you guys to take a moment and narrow it down into Kaoka, the impact that Kaoka has in your life. I'm not sure if that number is exactly correct, but I'm sure we have about 600, maybe even more Kaoka members. But out of that, take a moment and narrow it down even more. Think about yourself and how you play a role in this. There's just one of you and you have the opportunity of achieving total success in what you're doing right now, what you have the ability to do so in the future as well, right? You are really responsible for taking your future into your hands. You have the ability to define your path, your journey and creating that success story. Of course, you have um, a lot of support from I'm sure your family, your friends, um, your community, but it's it's what you what you bring to the table and what you're able to make out of it. And um, personally, I'm I'm very I'm business enthusiast, so I really aspire to lead by example and um, successfully execute my professional visions and be able to heighten my efforts towards professional development, which I'm very very passionate about. And given that we're in a virtual world right now, I think we're really blessed to have countless exciting opportunities. So within Kaoka itself, um, Preeti Auntie and Kedar Uncle have given so many different opportunities this year, just in a virtual world that we can um, have the opportunity to participate in. And I am beyond grateful to have had um, such wonderful professional as well as personal experiences and really the strong support system that I have from my parents, my sister, my family, my friends. And I think those are important too and important to acknowledge that as well. 
and of course Kaoka. I'm very happy to be a, a part of Kaoka because it's an organization that really strives to connect people and support future leaders, current leaders, of course, of our society. Um, with that being said, I do have my contact information on the slides. Um, that, is a, that is a link to my LinkedIn as well as my email. And if you scan the QR code, it'll lead you directly to my LinkedIn profile. Feel free to connect with me. Feel free to send me an email, a message. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions, anything that you guys are more interested in learning about? Okay. Thank you so much for the presentation. Lots of good uh, information there. Thank you, Asma. Yeah. Uh, for as far as the uh, uh, financial assistance and other stuff, yeah. is there one place you went to get all that information, or is it all like sprinkled everywhere? Yeah. So I got a lot of information just from my college counselors at uh -huh. at the not college counselors, high school counselors at um, yeah. the school that I went to. And they, mm -hmm. they would keep, they would organize um, discussions where they'd give you the, mm -hmm. the right direction into those resources. Mm -hmm. But you can look up FAFSA. Um, uh -huh. You can, um, I believe it opened on October 1st and I mm -hmm. think it closes March 1st. It's, it's oh, just a open. simple, yeah, yeah. It, those, those things are still open. It's a simple application. Um, Cal Grant, I don't remember how it works, but I think that's also a simple online application. So what I heard is like something like FAFSA and all, like yeah. most of us don't qualify, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> okay. so. But I think if, even though I think it's still important to apply, just, mm -hmm. just in case. Okay. But yeah, merit, merit based, you can get scholarships too. After mm -hmm. you apply to universities, I think sometimes they have scholarship um, separate applications mm -hmm. that you can um i guess nina can write additional essays yeah. Yeah. and um and those things happen after you uh, get an admission is that i i think some it depends on situation but yeah mm -hmm. okay. um shruti can i request you, of sharing so that um, we can yeah. see all the participants thank you yeah. thank you Um, hi, I had a question. Um, so I'm a junior in high school currently, and I was just wondering if either there was anything that you wish you had done in high school or any like anything that you really thought was important that you did in high school, like any advice that you have like for me, a junior in high school. To Definitely. Um, what are you what are you most interested in right now? Um, so I really have not spent much time figuring anything out. I just know that I'm I'm real I really enjoy doing music and I'm also really in interested in like environmental science okay that's really cool um I think it's important just to maybe talk to people that have backgrounds similar to that try and get get an understanding for what they did and maybe um hopefully that'll inspire you hopefully that'll help you better sort out what you want to do um like I said it's you're you can totally apply to a university with a very broad um broad major, broad topic that you're interested in studying. Um, but just make sure you're proactive about it. Make sure you're staying on top of things so it doesn't go beyond the four years of, of the college experience. Um, if there's anything I regret, um, I feel like I kind of, I just wish I, I, I knew more. I knew more and I, I talked to more people. I did, I did engage in different opportunities, different things beyond beyond the academics, but I wish I talked to more people. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, just uh, just from this half an hour of your presentation, Shruti, mm -hmm. it's like you have inspired the youth in thinking in a, <laughs> first of all, thinking of themselves as a brand, because you you know, in marketing, you would think of, you know, products or solutions as a brand, but thinking yeah. of yourself as a brand itself is um, 
you know, it requires a lot of self-thought and, you know, introspection. So you really need to sit and figure out, you know, for example, you know yourself best, but when it comes to defining yourself in three words, it's so hard. <laughs> so, <It is. laughs> so that itself is something you have really given to everyone. So that would be a great next step. Yeah, make sure, make sure you guys after this call, if you haven't already done. So think about those three words that you use to describe yourself. And also think about those three words that you use that others would describe you. And I think this will help you guys writing your college application. And also, like I said, for those of you um, in similar situations like me or um, in the college experience already, it'll help you think about how you present and prepare yourself for um, interviews. So the game doesn't stop, the process doesn't stop. I can definitely tell you um, applying to different companies right now, um, interviewing at different, at different places. It, it feels like the whole college applying process all over again, but, but I feel like there's, there's a different level of stress because um, you're, you're getting a job, you're adulting, you're, you have so many more different responsibilities. So, so it never stops. Adit says, what are some of the examples of college essay prompts? I actually don't remember any, anything specifically, but I'm sure if you go on, um, depending on the university you're interested in, um, so let's just consider UCs for now. Um, they, they have um, their prompts written on their website and I know because my sister is applying right now and there, I think the UCs have about eight prompts available and out of that you have to choose four and I think they're each 300 or 350 words that you have to write and they're the same prompts that I had four years ago so they're they're usually like related to how you'll impact the community how you have impacted the community um what's like your favorite um your favorite subject um things related to that does that answer your question on this Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Are there any other questions from kids or parents? Hey, Shruti, you have not talked about any study abroad programs. Did you have to No, go? I did not. I was kind of interested, but I never ended up doing it. Yeah, that's that's also um, a good good opportunity and experience for those of you in college. Um, I know at SGSU specifically, we have programs where there are three week programs where you can get that study abroad experience of taking one class and then going to some some country. And we also have programs that are semester long as well. So you get that opportunity to Hi, Mika. <laughs> you get that opportunity to um, understand what it's like to take the courses that you would take here, but um, immerse in a different cultural experience. Thanks, Ramishwam, for bringing that up. So how do you think the internships have changed with the COVID-19 uh, 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 social distancing? Because you can't physically go to an office and intern or something. So yeah. how do you do that now, nowadays? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was fortunate enough to um, start my internship at Hitachi in October of last year. So until this March, I was working in our office. So I work for a global team. So a lot of people that, that, um, that I work with are in like Europe, India, Japan, and just a lot of people that I work with um, live in like the San Ramon East Bay area and just did not want to commute. So my office space area was pretty empty as it is and just um, meetings when I would be there. Um, it, was, it was definitely nice to like see people's faces, um, have that small talk, that side conversation. Um, Cause I think it's important in taking those breaks, just seeing, seeing people that you work with. But um, since March, I have been working from home in addition to my school. Um, I think it's I think it's just something I've gotten used to. I would definitely prefer to be in the office though. Thanks. Yeah. There seems to be a question in the chat window. 
Ashutki. Yeah, I think someone has asked, how important is it to have a paid job during high school? Um, I actually did not have a paid job when I was in high school. Um, I think it's just up to you and up to what you want to gain out of it. If you're curious in um, earning money, I think that's really cool. That's totally fun. Um, but I think, I think um, the different jobs that you can have, whether it's working retail, working in tutoring, working in um, food industries, I think those are all very valuable experiences. My first um, paid job was, I think, after my freshman year of college, I worked at Paris Baguette. It's not my typical industry that I wanted to work in, of course, but I worked um, as a, in, in like the sales part of things. And I think there's a lot of skills that I gained from their soft skills that I still hold and keep to my heart. And they're very transferable to all of the roles that I've had, and I'm sure they will be um, later on. The soft skills are something that people can't just be like, okay, learn how to be nice, learn how to work with people, right? It's something that you have to learn from your experiences. The hard skills, like different, different tools that you use, you can take courses, people can train you how to do those. So I think it's important to have those experiences of working in like retail or working in food industries or tutoring, things related to that. Any specific tips that you would give, um, especially in this COVID situation and, you know, how to take advantage of it rather than see it as a disadvantage? And this is not just for Shruti, all of you, you know, if you feel uh, you have some ideas that you can share with uh, the kids that, that might help them, please feel free to share. I, I don't know if I'm a good person to answer that question. You see where I'm sitting? I'm sitting here almost the entire day or I'm in my bed. I, I need to exercise. I think we all need to exercise. Um, besides that, I think it's important to um, that mental health balance, like work-life balance. I think it's important to check up on your friends, talk to them once in a while. Um, catch up with them, make sure you're staying on top of things, staying organized. It's hard not seeing people, but. <laughs> Sounds good, Shruti. Any more thoughts from anyone or questions? Um, Preeti, Auntie, if I could share um, what you were referring to before with um, like the opportunities people could do right now. I know for me personally, um, one of the things that I was doing was I uh, kind of like started my own, not like business, but I would offer students um, piano classes. So I think things like that, if you play a musical instrument, you could always do that over Zoom if someone already has the instrument available. Mm -hmm. Or I know that a lot of people are doing like Zoom tutoring and you could always do that volunteering or you could do that as like a paid job, whichever you think is better for you. So I think those are two things that are really important. And then also something that I'm doing is like a um, internship where it doesn't require me to do like be in person with the organization, um, mm -hmm. especially because the organization itself already is um, has different like, I guess, branches in different countries. Mm -hmm. So if you intern for a company or like nonprofit like that, then I know a lot of them offer internships where you would just send emails to partners or donors or things like that or just call them. Um, and that's personally what I'm doing. So I think things like that, if you um, just look for those opportunities and nonprofit organizations, I know a lot of high school clubs um, align with nonprofit organizations that offer those kinds of internships. So I think those are just three things that I've personally looked into and what other people could use, especially like give, uh, given COVID and everything. That's, that's really wonderful, Nina. Um, and thank you for sharing that because these are wonderful ideas that Nina has given to um, all the kids here because um, we don't know how long COVID is going to last. So rather than waiting for it to get over and then plan something, um, you know, time is ticking. So there's no time to just sit around and wait. So as Nina said, always, you know, use up the time for anything. If, if you cannot do it in person, do it online. <laughs> get your experience, get your exposure, get used to, you know, uh, dealing with different cultures and time zones and build up that experience and um, get your <laughs> letters of recommendation also <laughs> in the meantime. So that's excellent, Nina. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Any more ideas, questions or 
Thoughts? I think Adit asked another question. So he says, what do college admission officers look for in college applications? So I think there's they're looking to see you as a well-rounded applicant. Um, right now, I think because the situation is different, they may not be looking or not be accepting um, your test scores. So rather they'll be placing a greater emphasis on your GPA as well as the essays if the colleges that you're applying to have essays. And then the different um, extracurriculars that you have been involved with, those are what you can use to write your essays, right? So they're trying to see, um, it doesn't matter if you're just a 4.0 student. If you if you if you're just a 4.0 student and you haven't done anything else, I I don't think that makes you unique, right? I think if you're if you're an average student, if you've if you've given back to the community, if you've done things that you're passionate about, I think that's what helps you stand out. That's what makes you well-rounded and and unique. Well said, Shruti. Any questions, Asatva, or any thoughts? Parents, kids? <laughs> um, if no more questions, we can um, stop the session, but you know uh, whom you can network with uh, within Kaoka, we know we have Shruti as an inspiration and all the folks who participated, you know, they are in the process of, you know, the, these college applications or just in college or in high school trying to figure out things. So you, you know whom to reach out to. So you can use this network, you can use the network that Shruti suggested. Um, and thank you, Shruti, for coming up with this presentation. Your tips were wonderful, um, and um, you know she, uh, she has also shared the presentation with me. So after this session, uh, if you don't mind, Shruti, and I know you yeah, both, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we'll share it with all the kids and parents, so you know they can use that as notes from the session, and hopefully it will help them in their uh, journey. Yeah, definitely. Ellie, thank any you so much from you. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I hope it was helpful to all of you guys. And like Preeti Auntie said, feel free to reach out if you have any questions and let me know how I can be of help to you. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you, Shruti. It was very insightful. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you.